so welcome students today's topic is working conditions you know working conditions play a very important role in job design while we go for designing a job it is very much essential to consider the working conditions which is conducive for working of the workers the working conditions should be congenial working should be favorable there should be no safety hazards so it is very imperative very important that all these factors are considered while we go for designing a job working conditions are an imp uh, important aspect of any job design right? because it is the working condition that creates the environment for the work a good working conditions enhances the productivity enhances the performance of the worker and if it is not favorable if it is not suitable then it adversely affects the performance and productivity of the work <clears throat> so working conditions are very very important and while designing a job it is given most important place in the job design physical factors like temperature humidity ventilation color all these affect the performance of the worker hmm? temperature you know temperature affects our performance if the temperature is very high if the humidity is very very high then our performance declines hmm? proper ventilation is required to circulate the air to hmm, have good uh, and vibrant environment inside the room inside the hall inside the building where we are working then color and noise colors also play a very important role can you imagine a life without color you go in the garden you see vivid colors of flowers hmm? and your mood gets cheerful huh? you enjoy the colors you become motivated you become cheerful so colors plays a very important role on our moods and then noise noise is any unwanted sound uh, and you know when there is undesirable noise undesirable sound we get irritated hmm? we often fail to perform under the high noise condition so these are very important factors and these all are considered in the job design to make the job design best suited for the workers these factors affect productivity quality of output and sometimes leads to accidents too huh? when there is undesirable sound when there is high noise hmm? when there is uh, a stale air inside the room so all these affects our performance hmm? distract us from working and sometimes under distraction sometimes due to annoyance hmm? a worker get irritated and due to that accidents also happen so these factors affect productivity hmm? and leads to accidents too so temperature and humidity plays a very important role on our performance work performance human beings can function under a wide range of temperature our body is highly adaptable it can work under a wide range of temperature but it has been seen that we work best if the temperature or comfort band is conducive to us comfort band is nothing it is the range of temperature under which a person can work a person can work <clears throat> best so temperature bands for the best performance for workers or others for little physical efforts are between 65 degree fahrenheit to 72 degree fahrenheit so if a worker exerts little physical work like us we sit in the office do little physical works huh? for us temperature band between 65 degree to 75 degree is best suited to give the best performance if the work is more strenuous moderately strenuous hmm, then the temperature band should be comfort band should be between 60 degree for an high to 70 degree hmm. and where the more strenuous activities are involved people work hard huh, more physical involvement is their temperature range should be 55 degree to 65 degree for an 
So it indicates that as we go for involving in more hard works, more strenuous work, more physical involvement is required. Hmm, there, the temperature should be minimum low. The temperature should be low. So temperature declines with the with the uh, works which is moderate to strenuous. Then maintaining a congenial temperature, heating and cooling, are relatively easier in offices. Huh? We work in a controlled environment in the office, the rooms are closed. So there it is easy to maintain a favorable congenial temperature. But in fact is where the ceilings are too high, the ceilings are too high, then doors are too large, and there is frequent inside coming and going out. So it is difficult. It is a challenge to maintain the temperature there. And hence, the suitable clothing, localized heating, and cooling are the only plausible solutions which can be applied in such conditions. Hmm? Uh, in factories, in uh, plants, there are some areas where a lot of heats are generated. Huh? So, to, uh, air conditioning, putting air conditioning in that areas are not possible, and therefore, localized solutions may be adopted by wearing a comfortable cloth, putting some local cooling system there, huh? or in cold some heating elements there. Then temperature and humidity. Humidity also plays an important role in maintaining a comfortable working environment. You might have observed that in rainy seasons when the humidity are high, we feel often discomfort, uncomfortable. So humidity affects the uh, mood and performance of the human being, humans, and Humidity in the range of 30% to 50% are more conducive to comfort. Huh? If the humidity is between 30 to 50%, then we'll feel comfortable, huh? we feel better, and we can perform better. Temperature is often influenced by the humidity level. Huh? If the humidity is high, then we need low temperature. Huh? When the weather is warm, we need low temperature. When the more heating on uh, and on cool days, we require more heating. Huh? So the temperature and humidity has close relationship. And when the temperature is high, when the humidity is high, the performance of workers get affected adversely. So it is imperative to maintain a conducive temperature, a conducive level of humidity so that workers can perform well. <coughs> then second aspect is ventilation. Ventilation plays a very important role. Huh? You know, even in our, when we make our house, we construct our house, we give due consideration on the ventilation. So ventilation is very important. Unpleasant and noxious odor can distract the workers and also become dangerous to the workers. Huh? If the room is closed, there is no proper ventilation. Hmm? So the air inside the room becomes stale, it becomes noxious, hmm? it can be dangerous, it can distract the attention and moods of the worker. And therefore, it is imperative that there should be a proper provision of ventilation so that air can be circulated, fresh air can come inside, and the stale air, the noxious air which is in the room, inside the room, goes out. Removal of a smoke and dust at regular intervals is also essential as the air can become stale and unpleasant. A smoke, sometimes the, if the room is closed, there is no proper ventilation, so it can generate carbon monoxide which is dangerous which is a poisonous gas and therefore it is very very much important that the design the job design while going for the job design we give due consideration to the ventilation to circulate the air inside the room and for that what we use we use large exhaust fans and air conditioning equipment to facilitate air circulation and reconditioning of air. Reconditioning of air is very important. The room should be full of fresh air and the noxious and stale air must be removed from the room so that it cannot affect the performance of the worker, health of the worker. Then third is illumination. Illumination is arrangement of lighting. So for proper working, we need lights. We need proper lights at proper place as per the nature of the job. The requirement of illumination depends on the nature of work. More detailed work requires higher level of illumination for desirable performance. Suppose we are working 
we are a teach we are teachers hmm? and we need to read a book so it is important that there should be proper light sufficient light so that it should not irritate our eyes it should not put a strain on our eyes and we can easily read the book so illumination is one of the essential components in work and that makes congenial working condition glare and contrasts are another important consideration so there should be proper glare there should be proper contrast it should not irritate our eyes it not irritate the eyes of the workers it should not affect the mood of the workers it should be proper it should not be pinching and that is why proper illumination is required good lights in halls stairways and other dangerous points are important so the halls big halls the stairways and the dangerous points huh? so some points where there is corner there is end of the hmm, uh, dock so at those places high lights high illumination is required there should be good lights hmm? but illumination is also expensive and thus high illumination at all places should be avoided huh? because as you put more number of lights it will add to the cost huh? so it is essential that we put proper lighting at dangerous points halls and moderate lighting where it is not that much required natural daylight is a good source of illumination we have sunlight we have enough sunlight it is free it is free to and it should be used to ex extend possible as much as possible and now you might be observing you might have seen that new buildings are designed with a lot of windows glasses and so that the illumination there should be the proper use of sunlight so that electricity the power can be conserved then and it also reduces the cost also hmm, help in reducing the cost of the production however inability to control natural light huh? but it is difficult difficult to control the natural lights huh? suppose there is a cloudy day huh? there is cloud outside so it affects the uh, illumination it affects the light intensity of light and this is the drawback that you should have proper arrangements so that in such conditions you can control the illumination then fourth is color color has two features huh? which are important for job, job designs as i told you earlier color affects our moods huh? color affects the feeling and also helps in visual discrimination huh? so if there is a good color if you move in a garden you see vivid uh, types of flowers hmm? colorful flowers and huh? you become uh, enthralled you become cheerful you are feeling hmm? and so you have good feelings so colors plays a very important role and then it you have might have seen on traffic lights it is used to control the traffic so it has it is used for the visual discrimination also colors induces emotional and psychological effects effect of some of the colors are hmm? so color plays a very important role on our emotions hmm? and it creates psychological effects red color conveys warmth warm hmm? joshi action and stimulation it is high visibility color you might have seen that in weddings we wear red colors hmm? red colors are widely utilized so it 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 is it is it uh, uh, stimulating it's it is a high visibility color and it gives a warmth yellow is a high visibility color that leads to cheerfulness and freshness so yellow is also a high visibility color that leads to cheerfulness and freshness blue a low visibility color conveys coolness and may promote thoughtfulness or depression so blue is a low visibility color Hmm. although it conveys coolness but sometimes it may promote depression so if you hmm, if some person is suffering from the depression then you should avoid blue colors then green is low visibility color often associated with calm and restfulness you know hmm. so in hospitals you might have seen that lot of green colors huh? the curtain bed sheets 
often they are of green colors because hmm, it is associated with calm and stillness. Can you imagine a hospital with red color hmm, curtains and uh, bed sheets? Red color connotes to the color of blood. Huh? So it will affect the mood of the patient and it may be sometimes give negative hmm, impression, negative thoughtfulness. It may provoke negativity in the minds of the patients and their attendants because it, it is it resembles with the color of the blood. So in hospitals, green colors are used to promote the calm and restfulness. Then brown, it is a low visibility color that imparts natural peaceful feeling. Yeah? So brown uh, color gives natural peaceful feeling. It is the color of earth, you know, it is a natural color. And then orange, a high visibility color that catches attention more than any other color huh? with a feeling of warmth and stimulation. So, Colors has their own effects on the mood and feelings of the human being. And according to the situation, these colors can be effectively utilized in promoting the, in motivating the, in uh, creating, in, 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 in inducing the thoughtfulness of the people. Then use of colors to de designate safe and hazardous area. Colors are widely used to designate safe and hazardous area. And you have already seen, you might have seen, you, are, you have worked in the plants and there are also different colors are used. Red is frequently used for fire protection equipment. Right? All fire protections are in general colored with the red color. Hmm? Then gasoline storage where the petrol, petroleum products are stored. So in those containers also red colors are applied. Danger sign, huh? color red is a danger sign. You are very much aware of that. Emergency warning lights and hot pipes. So all to, to designate all these things, red colors are used. Yellow is used to indicate caution. Huh? Yellow is the color that is used for indicating caution. And you might have seen in walkways, edges of the stairs, corner and use of the loading docks, yellow color are used. Huh? Heavy equipment, school buses, forklifts, huh? JCB, etc., are colored in yellow because it is a high visibility color. It can be seen from a far distance. And thus, it helps in avoiding the accidents, dangers. Then, blue. Blue color is used to mark control devices, water pipes, and walls. So often water pipes, control devices are colored, painted blue. When you see a pipe, when you see a wall, you will find that it is in blue color. Then green color. Green is used to designate safety areas of equipment. Green is the color of safety. In railways, it is widely used, you know, hmm? green color means go ahead. Purple used to indicate radiation hazards. So when there is a chance of radiation hazards, when there are places which can create radiation hazards in X-ray rooms, you will find that, that there is purple color. Orange is frequently used to depict dangerous parts of the equipment and switches. So these are the use of the colors to designate safe and hazardous areas. Then fifth is noise and vibration. Noise and vibration also has a very great impact on our performance and our mood. Noise is any unwanted sound hmm, that is undesirable hmm, that affects our performance. Machine and equipment as well as human may cause noise. Hmm. Sometimes a faulty machine or even the human beings, the workers, start gossiping, start talking. So these all hmm, creates noise. Noise means unwanted sound. It can be distracting and annoying that can lead to errors and accidents. Huh? So it is desirable that there should be no uh, noise. The working condition should be calm, there should be calmness. It can also damage or impair hearing if it is loud enough. Huh? You know that if a sound level is more than 35 decibels, it can huh, impair our hearing capacity, it can damage our ear. So it should be not loud enough. The control begins with the measurement of the offending sound and then replacement and or repairing of the faulty parts and machine. So it is important to hmm, 
collect the noise and vibrations and for that first thing is to identify to measure and measure the offending sounds and then replace the parts replace the machines which are faulty which are creating noise so either replace or repair this is so control measure is essential in that way. then work work breaks deviation of work affect the performance of the worker one cannot work continuously from morning to evening it is essential that there should be a work break at proper intervals when you you might have seen that when we go for uh, arranging a meeting or conferences we give tea break lunch break again tea break uh, even in offices uh, we have lunch break so break is essential frequency length and timing of breaks have a significant impact on both productivity and quality of output uh, if uh, you are working without any break so as a being as being a human being uh, it affects the performance and it certainly uh, affects the quality and productivity of the worker efficiency generally declines as the day years progresses huh? so with the uh, as the day progresses we starts feeling tired we starts feeling hmm, uh, we, we 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 want to take rest so efficiency declines as the day progresses and breaks in the form of lunch break and this create a upward shift in the efficiency hmm? after taking lunch take a small nap a small nap hmm? this is enhances the productivity huh? refreshes us so it is very important that there should be a proper work breaks at regular intervals at some intervals uh, at appropriate intervals so that it may recharge us it may refresh us and the worker can work uh, with cheerfulness then safety safety is the most important uh, component of any job design any body who is working requires safety first uh, worker safety is used the prime most important it should be given the top most priority in job design a worker certainly will not work hmm, as per his capacity if he will if he feels that he is in danger hmm. so worker safety should be given considerable importance in designing the work in the working conditions in deciding about the working conditions and it requires content constant attention from management and designers hmm. workers cannot be effectively motivated unless they feel they are in physical danger if they feel that they are in physical danger they will not give their 100% so it is essential that to extract to from their 100% in job that there should be proper safety conditions for employers accidents are undesirable because they are expensive huh? if some accidents happen then it affects the work huh? it affects the work the employer has to give compensation huh? go for financing the worker or his uh, treatment so it is expensive for the employer usually involved damage to equipment and products when accidents happens it damages the equipment and products also and they generally interrupt work due to accidents sometimes hmm, the work gets interrupted the and to combat with that to huh, overcome that employers require hiring errands trainings and make up work and it further adds to the cost of the employer for workers also accidents mean physical huh, suffering potential loss of earning and disruption of routine work or work routine huh? so accidents also affect the workers hmm? their physical and mental sufferings huh? their agony potential loss of earnings because of they are unable to work they are unable to huh? perform so their earnings certainly gets down and then it disrupts their work routine 
accidents sometimes happen due to workers carelessness and accidental and accidents happen so sometimes the carelessness of the workers leads to accidents an effective program of safety and accident control requires both cooperation of workers and management it is essential that there should be the cooperation of the workers workers should follow the norms workers should follow the rules workers should follow the procedures properly and the management should also be ready to provide the safety equipments safety and safety conditions for the workers so both cooperation of workers and management are essential workers must be trained and now hmm, proper procedures of handling with the equipment and machinery so workers should be well trained in how to handle the uh, equipment and machines so that they can use them effectively so this is all about huh? then at 320 again we will meet huh? this is for now thank you very much thank you sir